I'm 57, and quite a bit. I don't get enough exercise, and at this rate, I'm going to have my first, and very probably my last coronary before I hit 60. So I decided to do something about it, and bought myself a desk treadmill to try and get fitter and lose weight. It's been a total revelation! And these are the three reasons why I think desk treadmills, and in particular the walking pad, are an absolute winner. First, a bit of background. I'm not a huge fan of exercise. I mean, I don't mind walking, as long as it's to the pub, and I do enjoy cycling with friends at the weekend, preferably downhill, to the pub. But otherwise, I'm only interested in sport if it has an engine or it involves snow. And as for going to the gym, nah. The other problem is that I work from home and it's a very short commute from my bedroom to my study. About 40 steps, which only leaves another 9,960 to find. So about 18 months ago, in an attempt to move around a bit more, I bought this fabulous standing desk from a German company called Moll. I love it! With its sandwich design and veneer inlay, it's somehow got character that's missing from every other standing desk I looked at. Plus it has this huge drawer and built-in power sockets. But if I'm honest, I don't think I've used it standing up quite as much as I should have done. But anyway, standing only burns off eight more calories an hour than sitting. So it'll take a lot of hours of standing around before that lobster thermidor wears off. Then the other day, I was watching the productivity YouTuber Ali Abdul's review of his desk setup, and I saw it included a treadmill. Who knew you could walk and work at the same time? I mean, it just hadn't occurred to me that was even possible. I thought a treadmill was something you put in an unused spare bedroom with your collection of other unused exercise equipment. Anyway, I'd better get myself one of those, I thought. And here it is. First of all, oh my god, this thing's heavy. Ah, first of all, get it out of the box. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Ah, Christ! I've got to have a coronary getting this thing out of the box. Right. Oh my god. Right. Oh my god. There we go. Next thing, go and set it up under my desk. Thankfully, they put some wheels on this thing. So it's a little bit easier to move it about. There we go, and now for some exercise. Now I think the best way to demonstrate this thing will be to show you how it'll slot into a normal day's work. So here I am arriving at my desk after my particularly gruelling 40 step commute from my bedroom. But today I'm not going to just sit around on my ass all day, I'm going to spin up the treadmill. So first of all I need to raise my mole standing desk and ditch the chair. Over there. And then unfold the treadmill. There we go, simple as that. Bring it back to the radiator. Now there are a couple of ways of controlling this thing. You can use the supplied remote control or the inevitable app. Now I prefer the app because I can set a goal which can be either in distance, time, or calories. Three, two, one, go! Go! There we go. We're off. Now this treadmill does also have an automatic setting, and if you switch that on, then as you walk forward on the treadmill, it'll speed up, and as you go backwards, it'll slow down. But as you can see, I haven't got an awful lot of space in this office, so probably not enough room to do that. And anyway, I think it would just be a little bit too distracting if the speed was changing while I'm trying to get stuff done. Talking of which, uh, the million dollar question is, can I work? Well, let's find out. Here's a press release that I got the other day. I'm gonna copy and paste that into my website as I normally would, ready for editing. And, 
There we go. And perhaps type in a few words. And that's absolutely fine. I'm having no problem at all selecting text, copying and pasting it. Let's have a look uh, whether a menu, I can select a menu item easily enough, but then I am only doing two kilometers an hour. And that is quite a leisurely pace. I'm not sure it's gonna do much for my health and fitness. So let's rack it up a little bit. There we go, two and a half kilometers an hour. By the way, if you like watching a slightly overweight, slightly balding middle-aged man reviewing gadgets and tech, you might like to subscribe to this channel. And if you're finding it helpful to see how easy it is to work on a treadmill, then a like would be great under this film. That'll help me up the charts a bit, for which thank you very much. So there we go, two and a half kilometers an hour. I can still drink my coffee. I can still select text easily enough, copy and paste, and type. So let's go up another level. There we go, three kilometers an hour. Gosh, there's a little bit, of, a little bit more movement there, obviously, but I can still absolutely type fine. The thing is, when you've got your arms resting on the desk, the movement of your hips and legs doesn't translate through to your hands. So you can still type very accurately. And that's particularly the case actually with a mole desk like this one, um, because they're built so solidly and there's really not very much wobble, even when they're at the highest setting. So let's go up to, try it a bit higher, three and a half kilometers an hour. So it feels like I'm getting a bit more exercise, I must say. And I can still type absolutely fine, but it does become a little bit harder to control the mouse. I mean, it's, it's still doable. The problem is even the slightest movement of your hand translates into a, a centimetre or so on the screen. So it just becomes a little bit harder to hit menu items on the first attempt. Gosh, and I certainly wouldn't want to be doing any Photoshop or video editing for that matter. What are we at now? Four kilometres. I can still drink my coffee. I can still type absolutely as normal, no problem there at all. Selecting text is just becoming a little bit more tricky. There we go, four and a half kilometers. It does make a little bit of noise, this thing, but actually it's really not too intrusive. And at four and a half kilometers, reading is, you know, I can still read, but it is bouncing up and down. Where are we at? Oh, five kilometers an hour. Now I'm really feeling the pace. We've still got a little bit further to go. Five and a half kilometers an hour. Uh, time for another coffee test. Oh, shit. There we go. Yeah, I can still do it. I haven't spilt it down my front. But this is really... I mean, surprisingly, I can still type okay. It's just doing anything which involves that much more accuracy with the mouse. Well, one more to go, six kilometers. Oh, God. Let's see. Not gonna get any work done at this speed. So I think I'm gonna slow that back down again. So, there we go. Back down to a far more bearable three and a half kilometers an hour. Done eight minutes so far. And so that means I've got another 52 roughly to go. I won't 
force you to watch 52 minutes of me on the treadmill. So we'll speed the next bit up. Oh, well, there we go. Target reached. Oh God, it does feel a bit strange getting off this thing at the end. It's a bit like you've been on a ferry for half an hour. Uh, but I've done 6,031 steps and I burnt off 230 calories, which as I say is probably not much more than I would have done sitting down anyway, but there you go. Um, average speed three and a half kilometers now, and I've covered 3.7 kilometers. So there we have it. It really is possible to walk and work at the same time. The trick is to set the right speed. And for me, the sweet spot is about three, three and a half kilometers an hour, which is the speed at which it feels like I'm getting a reasonable amount of exercise while still being able to control my mouse well enough. But for you, it'll depend on your height. If you're Danny DeVito, your legs will be going like this, your mouse like this, and you may need to turn the speed down a little bit. You'll also need to plan your treadmill workout for when you're typically doing things which don't need the mouse so much. Typing is fine, browsing, reading and researching is okay, but I'd avoid any Photoshop or video editing whilst you're on the treadmill and certainly not above three and a half kilometers an hour, when your Photoshop output will probably start to look a little bit abstract. Now I've bought one of these things, I typically start the day with an hour on the treadmill while I catch up on emails, see what's been going on with my websites and perhaps write a couple of news stories. That way, I've banked 6,000 steps right at the start of the day. Now, I'd say my productivity does take a small hit while I'm on the treadmill, maybe 10, 20%, because it is harder to hit small icons and menu items on the computer first time. But then again, with all this exercise, I should live a bit longer. So there's a net productivity gain there. And what's the alternative? When I go for a walk outside, my productivity takes at least a 90% hit. So all in all then, the three reasons why I think this thing is an absolute winner are firstly the claimed health benefits, which include improving your heart health, lowering your risk of Alzheimer's, helping you lose weight, improving your sleep, strengthening your bones, strengthening your back and reducing backache, reducing your risk of diabetes, reducing your risk of cancer, improving your mood and improving your sex life. Bad luck, Mrs. G. That sounds pretty persuasive to me. The second reason I love this treadmill is because as a self-employed person, I don't have much time for anything at all, ever, other than work. So although I do tear myself away from my desk from time to time, it's not as often as I should, particularly between October and March each year when it's raining outside. I love the fact that now, even on the wettest, busiest days, I'm getting something like 7,000 steps minimum. And lastly, I like the way this walk pad folds up into a very small one and a half by three foot square, which I'm happy to leave under my desk. That's so much more practical than cluttering up the house with one of those god awful multi gym instruments of torture or a peloton, or God forbid, a rowing machine. Honestly, if I was gonna fill one of the rooms in my house with equipment, I'd be getting one of these first. Anyway, that's by the by. If you've been thinking about whether to get a treadmill, I hope this film has been helpful, and I'll put a link to the walk pad on Amazon below in case you'd like to buy one. And if you're interested in other relatively painless ways to get healthier, I've reviewed a couple of e-bikes, which I'll put links to over there or over there, I forget which. Otherwise, till the next time, I've been Arlo Guthrie. Bye-bye.